Hello, Latasha. How are you doing? I am fabulous. It is a wonderful Friday here in sunny California. <laughs> I knew you would come on with all that energy, and I've looked forward to that. So tell us a little about who you are and what you do. Oh, yeah. So my name's Latasha. I'm an author, teacher, and book coach, and I help people write their books in 90 days. And that's pretty much in a nutshell what I'm up to these days. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. One thing that I'm finding out about writing a book, at least for me, the most difficult part has not been the writing. It is actually finding an affordable editor. Yes. And so if you were giving advice to someone like me, whether it's they're not affordable or whether it's something else, what would you say? Yeah. So my very, very first book that I published in 2017 was completely self-edited and self-published. So it is not unheard of for someone to publish a book without an editor. Um, I wouldn't recommend it now, but when I was first starting out, I had zero budget. I had zero anything except for the desire and the willingness to get this thing out. So I literally called a friend and it was a friend who actually is a funny story. She was a teacher. She taught the same students that I taught, but she taught science and I taught history. And she heard me talking one day about something random, but nothing's random. And she said, you should write a book. And I was like, I don't think so. This was like 2003. And she's like, you have some interesting ideas. You really should consider writing a book. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like she had a PhD. You know, she had been through the whole process and everything. I didn't know anything about nothing. And I was so intimidated and just so nervous about it. And I was like, no. And she kept telling me like every other week or so, she'd be like, I'm telling you, you should write a book. I can help you. I've, I've done the process. And I kept saying, ah, girl. And lo and behold, like 12 years later, I called her up and we're still friends today. Um, she's gone on to a different school, but I was like, you know what? I have a book now. And she was like, let's let's look at it and i was like you can edit it for me she edited for me for free and she's a science teacher but she's really good at english as well and she's published several articles because like i said she's got a phd so she knew what she was doing so we went through that process together we got it out we put it on amazon um she helped me kind of promote it a little bit on facebook and it was out it was done we basically used google docs and we use Grammarly, and that was it. Google Docs is free, Grammarly is free. We did it, we, we got it out. And I look at it today, and I mean, it's, it's not like the books that I write today, because I'm doing better now, because I know better. But that first one, I mean, it has a few errors. If you look at it, it has a few little errors, but I'm so proud of it because that was my very first the first little thing that I did that allowed myself to open up to the world, right? It, it, it represented me coming out. It's literally called Secrets. It, it, it's represented me coming out of the closet and showing the world who God made me to be. And so tell us a little bit about what was in that book. Before I just get off yeah. into the book, right? Mm -hmm. well, share a little bit about that. Yeah, so the, the very opening scene, when you first open the book, it talks about um, me in the closet praying at night while everybody else is asleep in the house. The kids are asleep. My husband's asleep. I'm in the closet crying myself to sleep and asking God, is there anything else for me that I'm supposed to do with my life? That's how the book opens. And it takes you on a journey of how I got through depression and how I have put on a beautiful smile for everybody to see. Because everybody's always saying, oh, you got such a beautiful smile. So I used that smile to hide behind a wall so that other people couldn't really see who I truly was. And so God started speaking to me and letting me know, look, you got to call it on your life. You're going to be doing big things. And if you don't deal with all of this stuff right here, it's going to take you out of the game. And so I literally took, it's like a collection of my diary entries because I've always had a diary since I was 12 years old. 
And it was some deep stuff that I dealt with as a child and teenager and in college. And I wrote a little bit about where I was at when I met my husband. And I just, I had so much emotional trauma inside of my soul and my spirit that that was dragging me down. And so that's what it is literally called Secrets from My Closet. And that was my very first book. I put it out and I was like, Lord, please, Jesus, take the wheel. I don't know what's going to happen with this book, but it was phenomenal because it was like, I didn't know anything about anything. I just said, I think I'm supposed to put this out. And especially because my friend planted that seed 10 years before. And I was just, I, I had that. It was that little thing that was just kind of nagging at me year after year mm -hmm. after year. I would just go to work and take care of the kids and cook food and do the laundry. And I, But it was just that little, uh, you know, you're supposed to be doing something else. You know, there's more to life. And then finally I put it out and I said, oh, I just felt so much better. Well, I'm, I'm so proud of you not only sharing that, but from when I've met you and attended a Zoom call or two and listened a little bit on Clubhouse, you're doing a fantastic job helping people to write that first book. My own experience, it was a little bit easier in that I collaborated with some other individuals and one of the things that prompted me to do that, as you said, I just felt like I needed to share my story. And the particular story that I shared was overcoming myself. Because basically through decisions that I made, I became the man I thought or I actually wanted to be. And when I became that man, I looked around and I was trapped. Yeah, Because I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was arrogant. And that's not a good place to be. Because on the outside, like you said, for you, it was your smile for me it was stuff and i'll just say stuff what you see is not always what you get people may acquire material things they may have people beside them or they may be with people and they all appear to be successful and from a outside looking in view it looks like success but on the inside there's min misery there's anger there's insecurities and so when you said you felt that prompting that bump that's one of the reasons that i wanted to interview you because you are so helpful at the seminal stages of writing a book. So could you just tell me basically some common problems that people who you know when you talk to them that they should write a book, but they don't know it. Are there any particulars that stand out in most people that you'd be willing to share? Absolutely. The, the biggest thing that I hear about is writer's block. I started writing and I just couldn't, I don't know what happened. It just, all of a sudden it just stopped. So that's that's the first one. The other one is procrastination. Oh, I'm gonna do it, but I gotta do this first. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, I, I, I am. <laughs> I hear that. And then the other thing is there's so many distractions. I, I It's hard for me to focus, like I'm scatterbrained right those are just three of the things that i hear but i'm gonna just go to writer's block first of all i tell people there's no such thing it feels like it's real but it's not because writer's block just means that you have performance anxiety you are afraid that someone is going to look at you and judge you they're going to read your work and say oh that's not good or whatever you think they're going to say so that's really the block. It's your own mental barrier. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. blocking yourself. So that's the first thing. There's no such thing as writer's block. It's just something in your mind that you have to deal with and figure out why you're afraid to let other people read your work. What is it that's stopping you, right? So that's the first thing. I see a lot of people talking about writer's block all over the place um so that's one and then the procrastination oh well i have to do this first then i'll get to the book that's kind of connected to the writer's block because 
you're putting something in front of what you really want. You really want to write the book, but you, you're not sure how it's going to be received. So you keep putting things in front of it and waiting and holding off. And that's procrastination. That's, that's performance anxiety. That's you being afraid of being seen and heard. And then there's the distractions. Oh, well, wait a minute, so, wait a minute. Because yeah. I know this is a business. You help it's me. Deep. It's we, deep. I, don't want, I don't want you to give away everything. I, I want oh. some people to seek you out. I appreciate yeah. you sharing. But it took some days and nights and some labor for you to do what you do. So I want to pause right there. And if someone wants to seek out your services or your help, yeah. Could you just tell them how? Absolutely. So it's really easy to find me because I specialize with the first book. So if you just go to Google and put in myfirstbook.org, you'll see everything I got pop up right there on the website. There's free trainings. It, I break down all those different issues I just talked about. I break those things down. And so you can look at the free trainings, you can look at the testimonials and see what my clients say about the work. And it's just a good place to start if you're looking at that first book. Thank you. Another mm -hmm. question, is there a story of someone that you've helped that has inspired you? I know that you have a few because you're always excited when you're speaking about your friends or your clients, either or, or both. But is there someone who stands out? Can you share that story with us? Because it's personal to you. It's a passion to you. It's just not a business. There is a business aspect, but there's a personal, purposeful passion that you definitely have. Yes, this, this is a, a great story. This is a person that I met on Facebook and I had no idea anything about her at all. I just saw something that she wrote and I said, ooh, I should really reach out to her because I think we should talk because we have a connection. She posted something that said, today is the last day or no, this is the last year that I will be occupying this office because next year I plan to retire after 30 years in education. Ooh. And so that caught my attention. I've been in education for 18 years. I recently retired at 45, so I could do this full time. And so when I saw that, I said, ooh, let me reach out to her. I reached out to her and I just literally put a comment underneath the post that said, hey, you're retiring, congratulations, that's incredible, but what's next? And then I waited. And in about five minutes, she responded and she said, who are you? What, what, what do you do? Like you asking me this question, like, you know me. And she's like, where's this question coming from? And I said, let's talk in the instant message, check your inbox. And I said, I'm just curious about your journey your story. You look like somebody who has an interesting life. And she said, um, what do you do? And I introduced myself formally and I told her what I do. I said, I'm a teacher. I coach people through the book process. She said, mm, mm -mm. <laughs> she said, I have this book in my head, in my heart that I've been trying to write for two years. She said, I can't get it out. I just can't get it out. And she said, and you, I'm going to tell you why. And I said, well, hold up, stop there. Let's get on a call. Because this is going back and forth in the, in the Facebook messenger. And I said, no, let's just get on a call. We got on a call two days later. She told me her whole story. We sat on the call for like an hour, just connecting, laughing. Because the story is sad. It's very sad but there's a silver lining, there's a message, and there's an incredible story of this woman. Mm -hmm. And so she said, it's a very deep story, has a lot of levels. She goes, I haven't been able to get it out. She goes, it's because of the emotion inside the story, I cannot tell it, I need help. And I said, well, 
this is my zone of genius. Let's go. <laughs> and she was like, she's like, I don't know you. I, she's like, I, this could be bad, but I, I think it's going to be good. She's like, let's do it. I said, we started working together the next week. That's she got her book done in two months. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out some individuals. I'm going to create an individual. And if you had to give some advice to this yes. individual, <laughs> I want to hear it. So individual number one, I wrote a book. It didn't turn out too well, but I know I can do better. What would you tell them? Write another one. Wait one minute. Write another one. Well, <laughs> I think about it, but what if it crashes like the first? Write another one. Okay. Next scenario. I am a published author of two or three books. I know how the process goes. I've enjoyed the writings, but when I saw you and I heard you on Clubhouse, I felt like even though I've had two books published, there's something that you can add to me. What might that be? An online course. Can you give me a little detail? Because online course, there's plenty of online courses. What makes yours the online course that I need? Absolutely. So first of all, I need to know what these books are about. Which, What is your expertise? What is your topic? What is your passion that you really love? And then what is your personal story and how does that tie into what you're writing about? Because that's really... If you're able to take somebody on a journey and give them a transformation, because obviously you're accomplished, you, you, you've you written several books, you're successful. So how could you take somebody else who is where they are and help them get to where you are and beyond? That's the power of an online course. Thank you. Final scenario. This individual man, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. I know I can write a book. I, I've got a book in me, but I have no money. I have no money at all. I have no hopes of getting anything other than my paycheck. I'm living paycheck to paycheck, but I know I got a book in me. What would you tell me? Take my free course. It's a five-day process. I teach you how to write a book in five days and sell it. If you have the determination and the tenacity to take that free course, turn something into something, turn nothing into something, you can sell that book in five days. And I have a platform where you can come right on into my community and sell to my people. And I teach people how to do this every single day. And the people that finish, they make sales. The people that don't, they make excuses. Thank you. Thank you. So I thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or any questions that you have for me? Uh, well, I have a masterclass coming up next Thursday. And it's for people who really want to take a look at making a full-time income as an author. There's a misconception out there that's the starving artist, starving artists, the writers, they don't make any money, bloggers, they don't make, there's no money in that stuff. So I'm busting down the myth because I'm a full-time author and I get paid to publish my ideas and I get paid to do stuff like this, to speak and share. So if anybody that you know would want to learn, just do some research and figure out, you know, what is out there? Is there another thing for me to do? That's what the masterclass is for. So you can take a sneak peek and find out how I went from there to here. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, keep doing what you're doing. I'm encouraged by your walks in the morning. I haven't seen, maybe I missed it, but I haven't seen a walk post in a few weeks. Maybe I'm wrong. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just letting you know, you know, those were pretty encouraging and 
just continue to help people. And I've enjoyed watching you. I enjoy knowing you. Uh, pray. Oh, my final question. That was it. Yes. Mother, wife, author, coach. Yes. We'll just say those hats right there. Some people might say, heavy is the crown that you wear. What would you say? Woo! God gives me the strength to bear it all. Amen. <laughs> you have a wonderful day, okay? You too. Thank you so much.